Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a first gen Core i7. It cost me 10p, not 10 pounds, just 10 British pennies. This thing is ancient, but it has four cores, eight threads, and back in 2008, spending over 200 pounds or closer to 300 US dollars on one of these would have got you top tier performance. At the more modern end of the spectrum, we have this Intel's latest Pentium processor, the two core four thread G7400. It's hard to recommend as it's often too close in price to the i3-12100F which will do much better, but I couldn't help but wonder how this modern low-end CPU compares to a high-end part from years gone by when it comes to gaming. This video is quite short because both CPUs have their own issues and the conclusion is quite straightforward and applies to a lot of gaming scenarios that extends outside the ones featured today. Now for the i7 tests I'm running it with 24 gigs of triple channel memory which this platform supports, clocked at 30 1333 MHz by default and 1600 MHz. The i7 is also running at stock speeds in one test and then with a stable 3.6 GHz overclock in the other test. This was the highest I could get it stable within my old Alienware PC. The G7400 on the other hand, well, I've just slapped it in a motherboard straight out of the box and no adjustments have been made. It of course uses DDR4 or DDR5, but I'm using 3200 MHz of DDR4 today. There's no point trying to match the RAM speeds between these two because by default, if you purchase a CPU on a newer platform, you're gonna get faster memory. It is what it is, but I thought it'd be interesting nonetheless to see how these two compare with such a massive price difference between them these days. And of course the age gap too. Now in terms of CPU power, if we look at the Cinebench R20 multi-core result, then the Pentium does pull ahead of the stock i7 and the overclocked i7. So for what you're getting, it is a great chip. It's just priced really wrong in 2023. For our first game, we have Cyberpunk 2077 with the high crowds, medium textures and medium preset. The Pentium will often exhibit really good average figures, but where it falls short, is with the percentile lows, as you can see here. And the reason for that, I think, is because of the lack of physical cores. We have just two cores here. Forza Horizon 5 is the next game at the Ultra preset, and here the Pentium wipes the floor with the old i7 at both stock and overclocked speeds. This is in terms of the average, of course, because when we look at the 1% and 0.1% lows again, well, the results were quite similar. For The Witcher 3, the next-gen version of the game at the Ultra preset with TAAU, the Pentium hit 55 FPS on average, which again beat the i7 at stock and with an overclock, but it was once again where those percentile lows suffered, and in that regard, it traded blows with the i7 yet again. So, as I was saying at the start, the conclusion is pretty straightforward. Often, you'll see the Pentium beat the i7 in terms of an average, but it will trade blows with it with those percentile lows. So consistency is an issue across the board, to be honest. Finally, it's Red Dead. This will give weaker CPUs more trouble in towns and cities, areas packed with NPCs, but it's not all that troublesome for either CPU today. Again, the Pentium does do better on average, but all of the results were fairly consistent. I did plan to test Modern Warfare 2 and Hogwarts Legacy, but Call of Duty didn't work on the i7, and Hogwarts Legacy didn't work on the Pentium, so that sort of puts an end to that. But there we go. Now from a strictly stock speed perspective, the Pentium will win in terms of an average figure every time. And I have no doubt that you could close the gap even further if you were to really push the i7. But it's amazing that you can just pick up a modern dual core chip in 2023, slap it in a basic motherboard and get the performance that only a high end CPU would have offered 15 years ago. But thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.